Good evening. Welcome to our Grade 8 Information Night. My name is Dawn Dodham. I am the Assistant Curriculum Leader of Guidance and Student Services at Cedarbury Collegiate. We thank you very much for coming and as we spend the next hour or so together, we are looking to provide you with answers to some of your questions and to give you a picture of who we are at Cedarbury and what we're all about. As we start our evening, let's take a moment and pause as we recognize the lands that Cedarbray is located on. What we're doing tonight is we're going to look at who we are as a school. So I will give some introductions um, to our administration. We'll look at the grade nine program, areas of studies that we have at our school, school supports and opportunities that we have to offer the students. We'll look at a video that was prepared by two of our very talented grade 12 students and one of our leaders here at the school, Brandon Tate. And we will then hear from some of the other leaders in our school who will talk about the subject areas that they represent. At Cedarbrae, our principal is Ms. Richard Sauer. We have three VPs, Ms. Sucre, Mr. Barnes, and Mr. Grover. Each of these individuals you will see a little later on in the presentation um, and our video that we have to show you. I would now call on Ms. Richard Sauer to give you some information about Cedarbrae. So as we do to make the best of decisions so things do happen so I can't I won't say to you that things don't happen in any school they happen in all schools but at Cedarbrae we have many adults many caring and responsive staff and we work very hard um, to engage students and to be very visible around and to have good relationships with students to ensure that we do have a caring and safe environment. And that is our commitment to ensure that we can prepare a very bright future for our students, that we give them um, a good educational experience, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. So next slide, please. And of course, we are part of the uh, TDSB. And uh, we are committed to um, the philosophy of the TDSB, which is highlighted in the multi-year strategic plan. And we have uh, three um, important areas that we focus on in our school improvement plan, which is common in all TDSB schools. We focus on the well-being of students. We focus on equity to ensure that students get what they need that they are treated with respect according to all their needs, how they identify themselves and their personal circumstances and the circumstances of their family. And of course, achievement. We want students to leave um, with a good education so that they can be successful wherever they may go, be it post-secondary or the work um, or in the, the world of work. So we work very hard to ensure that and we do that by providing very responsive programs. We, we are a large school, so therefore we have a great offering of programs. I think every student who comes at Cedarbrae, comes to Cedarbrae, every student who is at Cedarbrae currently will find something or will find a place where they belong by the programs that we offer or the co-curricular um, offerings that we have. We have very committed staff who work with students both in and outside of the um, classroom to ensure that they get a well-rounded education and a well-rounded experience at our school. And of course, we operate always with an academic mindset that we want to keep all doors open for all our students so that when they leave, they can choose and that they're not limited um, to any particular pathway. And we, um, the provincial government has um, removed applied programming, but we did that um, 
a few years ago, well before that. So we are well ahead of that in that we have been very committed to ensuring that students are exposed to the highest um, academic standards and expectations so that they have the most enriching experiences. And when they leave, they do have all doors open for them. And all our staff are very committed to that and have been committed for a number of years. And lastly, I want to say that um, Cedar Bray, if uh, we hope to see all of you here tonight at Cedar Bray in September, but there are two main important ways to get uh, to Cedar Bray. First, if you live in our catchment area, which means that your address um, is um, an address that is connected to Cedar Bray, that is, your, uh, that is uh, seen as your automatic homeschool, then when you hand in your option selection at your elementary school, you automatically um, come to Cedarbury or would be uh, designated as registered at Cedarbury. We also have optional attendance that is for students who live outside that catchment area, meaning their address um, doesn't uh, automatically feed into Cedarbury. And they can fill out a form, an optional attendance form, and that they will get from their elementary school. And they will fill that form out, hand it back into the elementary principal or to their teachers. And the deadlines are listed there. They are due to us um, January 28th. And um, we will inform parents and students um, by February 11th. And then you will confirm with us by February 22nd. It does mean, however, that you need to hand that form into your elementary school before January 28th, just to be on the safe side or absolutely by January 28th, because those deadlines are very, um, are very firm. Okay, so again, I want to thank you for being here and we have a wonderful presentation for you. And I do look forward to seeing you um, in September. We are an amazing place. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richard Sauer. Now for my part of the evening right now, we're gonna talk about what exactly do we offer? So we're gonna look at the grade nine program and I will give you some information that will help you in knowing what you're about to do, whether you're coming to us on optional attendance or as a homeschool student. Next slide, please, Mr. Grover. So what programs do we offer at Cedarbury? We have our regular program, the extended French, the immersion French, our what's called our LEAP program, the literacy enrichment uh, academic program. And that's for students who um, have large gaps in their education from the country that they have come to Canada from. And we also have our English as a second language uh, program, which is for students who are learning um, English as it says, as their second language. And so we have courses available for them in the ESL program. Next slide. The OSSD, which is called the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, all of those programs we have will lead you to this diploma by the time you finish at high school. And to get that, you need 30 credits. And in order to get those 30 credits, you need what are known as 18 compulsory courses, and those are the courses that the Ministry of Education says you must take. And without those, you cannot get your diploma. And then you have 12 um, elective or optional courses. And those courses are based on your interests and your skills and your talents and maybe the pathway you want to get into once you finish high school. And so you have a total of 30 credits. And you will get eight of those in your grade nine year. Now, there's a difference between grade eight and grade nine, and that is that you must get a certain percentage in order to earn the credit. Every class has a credit attached to it. And so 50% is the minimum mark that you get to earn your credit. But I know none of you is just going to aim for 50%. So you're going to be aiming to, to go past that. So if we look at now how this diploma leads you into grade nine, or what's the connection between grade nine and the diploma? Let's look at the next slide. 
And the grade nine courses that everybody has to take are English, mathematics, science, French, and geography. And by the way, this is the order that you will see your courses on the My Blueprint uh, course selection when you start doing that with your grade eight teacher. So you have to take these, but what are they going to look like at Cedarbrae? And this is where we look at academic pathways. Everybody is going to be able to take the courses at the same level. But in order to do that, you're going to have to know what course codes to choose. So what I have here is a listing of those course codes. So for instance, if you're in um, any other program other than ESL, you're going to be taking ENG 1D. That's the code you get to choose. And if you're going into ESL, you would choose one of the levels that are there and your ESL teacher at your grade eight school will help you help you decide which ESL level um, you would be coming into high school with. If we look at math, notice there's um, two codes there. The math says MTH1W1 and then there's an MTH1W5. Well, that one at the end of that code means please teach this to me in English. But that five at the end of the code indicates that that's an immersion French. So that is a course that the students would be taking who are in immersion French and choosing that code. The same in science, we have the English or we have the immersion French. And when we get down to French, we have what's known as the core French, the FSF 1D1 or the FSF 102. Now, what is the difference between that? Beginner French FSF 102 is for students who haven't had a chance to do 600 hours of French um, in their elementary school years. The FSF 1D1 is for students who have done more than 600 hours. The FIF or FIF is for immersion French and the FEF, FEF is for the extended French students. And when we look at geography, we have the the one at the end, that's for English. We have the four for extended French. We have the five for immersion French. And there's an eight, which stands for ESL geography. So those are the codes you're going to be looking at. And everybody will be grouping together to work at the same level and grow and learn together. Next slide, please. So what else do you have to take? I said you have to take, I think I said you have to take eight subjects. Those are only five. So the other courses you're gonna choose from are listed here. Every student in grade nine has to take a phys ed course. And that course will start with a PPL 1.0. And we offer at Cedarbrae, both in English and French, we offer girls phys ed, boys phys ed, and a co-ed or all gender phys ed class. And on the course selection worksheet that I will post on our website, you can see what those particular codes are for each of those. So every student in grade nine takes phys ed. Then every student needs to take an arts credit in grade nine. And we offer visual arts, we offer drama, we offer music courses. And a little later on, you're gonna hear from our head of the arts department and take a look at these courses. And we have some interesting focuses in each of those areas. And then the last subject that you're going to choose is an optional or elective subject. And you're gonna choose between business, family studies, learning strategies, and exploring technologies. And just so you're aware, the um, learning strategies in particular, I would like you to be aware that GLE 109 is for students who have an IEP but the GLS 101 is for students who do not have an IEP. So we offer learning strategies to all students. Next slide, please. So on this particular um, slide, you can see that in extended or immersion French, we do offer a variety of different courses and they're outlined in the red there. So for the extended French student, um, obviously, you'll take French and French, but you'll also take geography and phys ed and visual arts is offered in French. For the immersion students, we offer um, French, geography, phys ed, and math. So French, geography, phys ed, and math, for sure, you will take in French. 
We also offer the science in French, but we also give the immersion students the choice of taking that in English too, just in case they'd like to be part of our grade nine STEM program. And again, visual arts is also offered in French. And as you can see, you have a very strong foundation in your French if you are going to be part of the extended immersion French. So we start you off with many courses in the French area so that you can build on that as you move through high school. Next slide, please. So we also have a variety of different areas of study. So what does that mean? So if we move on to the next slide, I'm just gonna let you read these. I'm not gonna read them out to you, but I want you to notice that there's a wide range of, of courses or areas that you can study in. And the reason we have that is so that you can choose your pathway. You can explore um, different areas of study. Uh, we can move on to the next slide too, because there's more areas of study. Um, and we want you to look at where your skills are and your strengths and your interests. So we want you to be able to, to try out a number of different things and to find out where you would like to head to once you complete high school. Um, with respect to our school, about 60 years ago we started. Uh, can, can, well, just thank you. Um, we have, and my apologies to anybody who speaks Latin, our motto is Hic Patit Ingenius Campus, which means here is the place where talents thrive. And that is why we have so many areas of study. That is why we offer you so much in the school. Um, so if you are coming to Cedarbrae, we want you to find out who you are, where you wanna go, and we wanna help you get there. Next slide. One of the ways we can do that would be through our STEM program. So grade nine students who are interested in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, can actually be part of a grade nine STEM cohort. And it provides a, a learning in a collaborative and project-based um, environment. And it combines the curriculum of English, science, and business together. So say you have a science um, project you have to do, but you take that science project and you kind of move it into English and you do a, an assignment for English based on that project. And you use your BTT, which is the business course, to put all of that information together with technology and, and um, just organizing your thoughts into that final product. So the students are scheduled into the same class at the same time. We usually do this in, a, in semester one and every student who's interested in STEM does have to take the science, the English and the business. And then the students who are interested, we have a, a letter that's already on our grade eight to nine transition webpage at uh, Cedarbrae, or Cedarbrae website, sorry. And uh, that's the website, yep. Yeah. And if you take a look at this page, just down at the, the uh, left-hand corner, a little further down, you'll see it, oh, a little further up. You'll see where it says grade nine STEM letter and application. So when you open that up, you'll learn more about STEM and if you are interested in the STEM program, what you will do is fill in a couple of questions for us. Tell us why you want to be part of STEM. That's the second page of this. It's a fillable form. And you send that back to me via email. The information is there, the date it's due, or you can actually bring it into the school, into the student services or guidance office. So if you are interested in that area, there is where you would find the information. Next slide, please. We also have some other uh, special programs that you can actually start in grade 11. And there are specialist high skills majors. We have one in construction. And if we go to the next slide, we also have one in business. And both of these specialist high skills majors, what they do for you is they bundle courses together in those two particular areas. And they lead to all four pathways, the apprenticeship, the college, the university, or the workplace. And you also earn uh, specialized certificates and you take co-op and you do reach ahead. And it helps you to focus in on the area that you might be interested in as a pathway after high school. So these start in grade 11. 
Next slide, please. So what do we have in our building that's going to help you? Well, if you take a look here, we have our fitness room and we have our computer labs and our music rooms and our cafeteria and our breakfast club. You know, if you leave home and you haven't had your breakfast, you head to the, the cafeteria and for 25 cents, you get some breakfast so that when you go to your first period class, your stomach's not rumbling and you can concentrate on your subjects. The pool is there, the dance studio. You'll see some of these things in our video, but we have those available in our building for you. In addition, we have supports that we've put in place. High school is a very challenging um, time for many students. And so we wanna make sure that we have supports in place. So as you can see there, we have our special education, student services, which is guidance, um, we have our child and youth worker, a social worker, we have a settlement worker. We also focus a great deal on student mental health and wellness and equity and student voice. And as you can see on the slide, we have put things in place for students. For instance, these in Islamic, Black or Indigenous newsletters that have been done have been put together by um, one of our teachers, Ms. Vollmer, and students. And that information gets out to the students. So we are very much um, interested in supporting students wherever they are and making sure that school is successful for them. Next slide, please. So student services, that's guidance. That's where I come in. And I also have in your, and Ms. Beck and Mr. Uh, DiCarlo are answering questions in chat. Um, and they're part of our student services department. And we do a lot of things. We're like the parents away from home. So our job is to be there as that caring adult to answer questions, to guide, to give information. And as you can see on this slide, we do many, many different things. Um, students can just come and talk to us about how, how their day is going or how the class is going. Um, what, what are they... Um, what are they looking to, to do later on in life? And so our job is really to work with the teachers and the, and the administration and the parents and the students to work to provide the best possible environment for your, your child or for yourself, if you're the grade eight student, to thrive and to grow. So as I said, we're like the uh, parents away from home for your children. Speaking of parents, education and high school in particular is a, a time where parents and admin and students and um, guidance counselors work together in partnership to make sure things are successful. So we encourage you to be part of our student council as parents, to attend our parent-teacher interviews, to be aware of um, how your child's doing academically. And if you don't know, then what, um, you will look at is talking to the teachers or maybe talking to the, your, your child's guidance counselor. We want you to be aware of your child's attendance because attendance is really important as a, a child is learning. If students miss school, it makes it very difficult for them to be successful. So parent involvement is one thing that we really do encourage within our school. So enough from me. I'm going to ask Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chi to talk a little bit about what extracurricular opportunities are available for you at Cedarbrae. Thanks, Ms. Donham. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Chi. I'm uh, the ACL of Student Opportunities and uh, Extracurriculars at Cedarbrae. Um, I also teach the French Immersion for the terms of history, civics, and careers. So if you have any questions about that, I can answer uh, those questions. Next slide, please. I see today we have a lot of different clubs and sports and statistics have shown that, you know, um, that students tend to perform much better when they're involved within a school community, whether that means through uh, sports, um, associations or clubs. And, you know, forget statistics, you know, I'm sure many of our teachers can attest to that, um, that students generally do a lot better when they are involved in their school community. Next slide, please. Oh, and there's a infographic if you take a look uh, at the previous slide, but that's not our time. At Cedar Bay, we currently have tons of different sports and, uh, and clubs clubs available here, um, including SAC, which I run, uh, and other, other, other associations such as the Black Students Association, Muslim Students Association, 
uh, peer tutors, um, and there really are clubs for every different type of interest, including chess, design, drama, etc. cetera. Um, cer certainly with COVID and the restrictions, there are way fewer clubs this year, but as you, as you can see, there are still plenty of clubs, even though uh, there are restrictions still, still running at this moment. Um, we also have some very, some very exciting uh, initiatives, such as DECA and Model UN, uh, which run usually, but not this year, but certainly look out for those in coming years uh, when you do arrive at Cedar Bay next year. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I think that's athletics. That is. So thank you, Mr. Chi, for that. Uh, we do have a lot of activities that are available. And right now I'm going to also ask Ms. Aquino, you're already there, thank you, to talk about the student experience in the athletics and our grade nine gym. Thank you so much, Ms. Dottam. Hi, everyone. My name is Pamela Aquino, and I'm the Curriculum Head of Health and Physical Education, along with Promotion of Athletics here at Cedar Bray. And we are so very happy that after a two-year hiatus, athletics is finally back in our schools. You can definitely feel the buzz, and a lot of kids are asking questions of how they can get involved. So all of that is coming very shortly to our schools. Um, can you turn to the next slide, please? What athletics do we offer? Well, our aim is to do our best to have students' interests interest drive what sports teams we offer. As you can see, we have a wide range of sports and um, athletics that are running in the fall, winter, and spring. Due to COVID, we will have a mix of schedules currently for this school year, and hopefully for next year, we're able to get back on track to uh, what we once were accustomed to. Uh, next slide, please. Um, an association that we run is the Cedar Bay Athletic Association, which is a student-led leadership group which helps to assist with our extracurriculars of athletics. And they're in charge of running intramural programs, which are um, opportunities for students to participate in sports in, at Cedar Bray that are not on sports teams, um, having spirit days, fundraisers. And we are currently working on organizing team gear right now so that you can wear your Colt gear wherever you go. Um, as well as hosting any home games for our sports teams. Next slide, please. All right, in our health and physical education um, course offerings, we do reward a certificate recognition upon graduation if a student earns five physical education courses. We do offer a wide range from nine through 12, as well as a personal fitness course in grade 11 and 12, which uses the full facilities of our fitness center. Um, we also offer two senior level courses, um, a grade 12 mix course, as well as a grade 12 university kinesiology course that are geared towards developing leadership, as well if anyone is interested in taking sciences and studying the human body. All of our course structure focuses on 70% of the term work, looking at our activity units. And there's just a small list of activities that we do offer where a lot of students will be gaining skills that they can transfer to other um, activity units. And again, it's geared towards whatever the interests are of our students. Next slide, please. As we saw with the pandemic, mental health and well-being became the forefront of our attention, and 30% of our course structure is around health topics, where we discuss current events and current trends that are taking place when it comes to healthy eating, personal safety and injury prevention, substance use, addictions, and related behaviors, as well as human development. And every single grade, the topics do range um, as well grows with the student as they go from grade 9 through 12. Um, it's very nice to, to see all of you tonight, and hopefully we'll see you again in September. Looking forward to it. Have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Aquino. Now we had two grade 12 students and our um, one of our ACLs, Mr. Brendan Tate, and we had our um, Jennifer and Merkham put together a video presentation for you to have you see what Cedar Bray is a little bit like and to give you a little bit break, of a break from somebody talking at you. So Mr. Grover, could you start the video presentation and make sure you optimize the sound? All right, so if everyone's looking at a big gray box, we should be good to go. Hopefully I did this right. We are looking um, at a big gray box, yes. <laughs> all right. Um, for some reason, there's not a link for me to click here. Am I doing? Sorry, everyone. One second. Ah, okay. Forgive me, Ms. Dottom. The link doesn't seem embedded there. Do you, one second, I'm just going to have to dig that out of my email, everyone. Well, while, we do, while we do that, what we'll do is we'll just um, 
skip ahead to well, just uh, perhaps skip ahead a little bit and um, we will ask uh, Mr. Hess if he is available to speak a little bit about the uh, the French program and then yes, we'll go back to the video. All right, before you go, Mr. Hess, and apologies, everyone, for this little hiccup. Blame me. I didn't point the fingers very well. Uh, can someone email me the link? I would go into my email, but I don't think everyone wants to read what I've got in there. So uh, if I go as if, as, could someone just post in the chat the link to the video for me? I will, I will do that. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the link. Our apologies. Mr. Hess will continue as we find out why we can't get that video. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Dodum. Hello, good evening, bonsoir, et hola a todos. And uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm uh, Mr. Hess, the head of international languages here at Cedar Bray. And I'm going to quickly take you through a whistle stop tour of our languages department here uh, at Cedar Bray. So we have uh, a number of courses here available. Um, as you've heard before, we do offer uh, an extended and an immersion program, uh, as well as our core subjects uh, for 9, 10, 11, 12, as well as uh, two grade nine subjects in academic pathways, as well as the open course for our beginner learners. Um, and we have also Spanish available from grade 10 as an elective uh, which is uh, which is a very a very much a growing program at the school. Um, so you can see on the next slide, these are our two main course offerings for our grade eight non-immersion students or extended students. So for those of us that have been doing French since grade four, you will be going into our academic stream. And for those of you who uh, maybe started a bit later, that will be the open stream. And that is the one French credit that you must earn in order to uh, earn your OSSD, as mentioned previously. Um, thank you, Miss. Next slide, please. Uh, as mentioned, we also have a, uh, a, a significant extended and immersion program, which offers a wide variety of courses throughout the many departments at the school. Um, and we will be having a special evening next week, Thursday, in order to discuss that in a bit more detail. Um, and I'm just going to share a link now in the chat. If any of you would have have not maybe heard about the uh, program, I know schools are very busy at this time of year. If I could just ask you to fill in the uh, brief survey and I will happily send out the invite to you personally so that you can join us next week for our um, French immersion and extended evening. As I mentioned, we do also offer uh, Spanish at uh, Cedar Bray. It is a very much a growing course. Uh, we now have three uh, different classes all the way through from 10, grade 10 to grade 12. The great thing about the Spanish program is that it was also a U level course, which means that uh, our universities are really um, excited to welcome students who have done a number of languages. And it's a great opportunity to start from the beginning um, and experience a new language, another language, one that's the third most spoken in the world. So in the French department, we are extremely flexible. We like to, um, to listen to our students. Here are some quotes from our students this year as what they liked about the program. And we often have a number of check-ins where we give students the opportunity to tell us that what they like to study, to include that into the curriculum and to see how we can best improve the course throughout the year. So we very much look forward to seeing you in September. If you have any other questions, please feel free to either give myself um, or Miss Dodham uh, a call or send us an email and we will happily connect with you. Uh, also, please remember to fill in the form and I'll happily send that invite for next week. And we look forward to seeing you at Cedar Brain next year. Merci beaucoup. Bonne soirée. Thank you, Mr. Hess. So I think the problem is that when I attach the link, it didn't link. So here we go with the video. Thank you for your patience. 
Okay, so I'm going to hit play, and I think I've set this up correctly now. Forgive me for being a bit slow on the uptake there. If uh, the volume isn't working, um, just uh, let the chat blow up and someone will correct me. So here we go. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Cedar Bray, home of the Colts and the best school at Markham and Lawrence. My name is Carol Richard Sauer and I'm your principal. We have a very informative evening for you. So come on in, let's listen, watch, and learn why this is the best place for you. Come on in. So now that we've been welcomed to Cedarbury, I'm going to very quickly introduce us to the academic wing of the building. And here at Cedarbury, our academic wing is actually three full floors down there, which makes it as big as most entire schools, which gives you a sense of the size of the building. So. Going down the hall on this floor, which is actually the second floor in the academic wing, floor two here is where we have all our language arts classes. So those of you in French immersion, you're going to go down there, turn left and meet your French immersion teachers. And the rest of us for our English classes, we're going right down that direction. For some of your other academic courses like math and business and computer sciences, we're going to go up to the top floor where we get a nice view down towards the lake. And for your other courses, like social studies, we have a food lab downstairs, we have a sewing lab downstairs, a very large science department where we offer all science classes. Down to the right, the booths is down to the left. We also have geography and history, our full complement. The large size of the wing is also indicative of the wide array of subjects we're able to offer here at CUNY. And that's just a very quick introduction to our academic So, I've taken drama for the last two years at Cedar Bray in grade 9 and 10, and this year I'm taking visual arts in grade 11. Um, last year I was in a play at our school for the National Theater School Drama Festival competition. We moved on to regionals, we won a bunch of awards, it was a super good play, it was student written, student directed, um, and this year we're doing a musical for the first time in what, like five, six years, and I am in this too, I am playing Willy Wonka in Willy Wonka, and I haven't had that many rehearsals, but I love the cast so far, they're super talented, and I can't wait to show it to I I took um, visual arts in grade nine and this year in grade eleven, and I'm also in um, crafts in grade eleven. And in crafts, you get to do uh, stuff like this, make like cool masks, like plaster your face. In visual arts in grade eleven, right now we're actually working on painting some doors, so like we get to leave our marks on the school. You know, we can come back and see like, hey, I painted that door. You know, I think it'll be really. It's really, really fun, for sure. Uh, what I liked also, about the STEM program was how we put in all the subjects into one project, and every class we got to work on it, and we could focus on just one project, and the end product would be a lot better. My favorite part about the STEM program was that we were able to stick together as a group throughout the first semester because it would allow us to inter like interact with each other and be able to build better bonds at the beginning of high school. Days. So here's a chance to catch up with everything we've been doing. If you are ready to move on. An emotional person that just has no choice. And this is the library or learning commons as we call it here. I'm one of the teacher librarians. I'm Mr. Tate. And I'm Ms. Sullivan. And we'd like to welcome you to the library. One of the key features that we have are the student lounges. We have two key sections that you can sit in and relax during your spare or lunch. You can come, charge your devices, work, socialize. It's a welcoming space for you. We also have an awesome selection of graphic novels. We know students love manga and we constantly are updating it to have the newest and latest titles. And it's not a typical thing you see in the library, but we have a fitness space. So if you're feeling a little bit stressed out and you want to work out some energy or just get in better shape, you can come to the library and work out 
and we have a monthly workout challenge where you can try and win the title of being the best rower of the month. In addition to manga, we also have a selection of books for you to choose from. We're constantly updating our display for our newest additions to our collection, um, so feel free to come and peruse when we have time. This is an awesome space, and we hope that you'll come to Cedar Bay next year and participate in it and enjoy it. Thanks a lot, everybody. At Cedar Bray, we the French. On poursuit l'excellence pour vos enfants. Des professeurs engageants. Une équipe diverse et inclusive. Des qualifications à vie. On vous accueillera chez nous. Et vous direz, we the Bray. We the Bray. We the Bray. We the Bray. My name is Houston Barnes, and I'm one of the Vice Principals at Cedarburn. And I want to let you know that we have a lot of sports that you can play when you come here. Girls and boys basketball, girls and boys soccer, girls and boys hockey. We have field hockey for girls, we have softball, we have just about every sport that you can make, including swimming in this beautiful pool. So when you come here, know that you'll have lots of opportunities My name is Ambika Sukram and I'm one of the Vice Principals here at Cedar Bray. At Cedar Bray, in the past, we've had a variety of clubs and we hope to have our full spectrum of clubs up and running for next year. In the past, we've had math, science and computer contests, an arts club, an anime club, band, a French club, a recycling club, me to we. we have something for everyone and again we hope that these clubs are up and running for next year. For this year specifically um, we have our SAC that's running, a chess club, um, a design club, a poetry and storytelling club, a nutrition program for students, and a peer tutoring program. We hope to see you at our school next year. At the school recycling every Friday. We do gardening. We want eco trips. And we raise awareness on recycling and the current global Cedar Bray is a place to grow, learn, and discover yourself. With teams like robotics, media, and the band, you can find what you're interested in and learn a lot about yourself.
Well, thank you for being here. I hope you will enjoy the presentation. This is the start of a wonderful journey. Look at our amazing foyer. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in September. So that's a little bit of a, uh, an idea of what Cedar Bray is all about. Um, the two students at the end were our grade 12 students that put that together for us. So now we're going to move on and I'm going to ask Mr. Barnes to um, talk to us a little bit about our technological studies department. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dottom. Um, so technology is near and dear to my heart and it's really exciting to get a chance to speak about it. Next slide, thank you. Mr. Grover. So what you see on this slide is a whole lot of different courses. I'm going to speak really briefly to be fair to everybody else because everybody here has a lot of important things to say, but there is a lot of different tech here. Integrated tech, there's construction, there's electrical, there's design tech, we have photography, we have auto mechanics, uh, we're looking at having manufacturing, it's just a, a di uh, digital media, it's a whole lot going on. Mr. Grover, next slide please. So um, very briefly in grade nine, what we want you to try, and this is an elective course or an optional course, is that exploring technology course, TIJ. And there you do a little bit of everything. You definitely learn about safety. You're gonna learn to use some of the tools, some hand tools, some power tools, and you're gonna get a chance to do some different projects, cross-curricular projects. And it's a really good introduction to some of the skills or most of the skills that you'll use in depth in the years to follow. Next slide. So super excited about this program. This is the first year that we have a construction program that's really um, based on building a house. Have you ever wondered how a house gets built? How are the walls connected? How does that framing happen? How do you build um, a roof? This is a course for you. And we we're gonna have it, currently we have it in grade 11. Next year we'll have it in grade 10, 11 and 12, hopefully. Um, and it's connected to our specialist high skills majors program, which is a really great program um, for construction. Next slide. So the other side of carpentry is the fine carpentry. So building a house is called rough carpentry. We also have fine carpentry and um, that's also a career that you can definitely get, make a lot of money in. Um, and it's a, an exciting part of our Shizu program as well. Sorry, I have a crazy dog in the background. Um, this course is also new, electrical, electrical wiring. And, um, you know, it's not just walls that make a house, but it is the power, the lights, the electricity. And that is a trade that, again, um, we, we would like you to explore. It's a new program this year, and we'll have grade 11 and 12 courses next year. Transportation technology, of course, is auto mechanics. And it's not just about cars. You'll also learn about outboard motors and small engines. Uh, we have a course also called Women and Wheels. And that's um, for female students who traditionally may not want to take um, an auto course, but our courses are for both male and female. Photography, so a little bit different. Um, if you're interested in art and you'd like to try your hand or learn about the principles of photography, this is something that you can use in many careers. And we have those courses, grade 11 and 12. Um, Comtech, so if you're interested in websites or animation or making movies or videos, Comtech is where it's at and this is an exciting course to take. Next slide, please. So the last thing I'll say is technology is a different way to use your intelligence and it gives you a chance to get up and move around, be active and learn. So take some of those tech courses. We'll see you next year. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Um, I'm going to call on Mr. Rez. You're already here. Mr. Riznicki is going to talk about business studies. Good evening. If I could have the next slide. Thanks, Mr. Grover. Uh, our grade nine course uh, is called Intro to Communi uh, Information and Communication Technology. And this course gives the basics of business with a focus on using technology like Google Docs and all the other Google apps for education, as well as Microsoft Office. So we always encourage students to take this course, not because they're gonna learn about uh, these 
uh, applications, but also they can apply it to all their courses, English, math, science. Uh, we're also part of the STEM program in this course. So you get an opportunity to do those interactive projects that apply to science and uh, English as well. Um, next slide, Mr. Grover. So beyond our grade nine program, we have a wide array of courses in grade 10. We have our intro to business in grade 11. We focus on accounting, marketing, and certainly one of the biggest uh, topics is entrepreneurship. Um, in grade 12, we have leadership, international business, um, as well as we have two specialized courses at Cedar Bray. Uh, one is called sports and entertainment marketing. The other is financial securities. These are interdisciplinary courses that aren't offered at all schools. Um, so we invite students not only to take one or two business courses, we have a business program. And if we could look at the next slide, Mr. Grover. And that's where our Schism program comes in. Kids will get a chance to specialize in their business courses in combination with their math and science and other courses. And they will get that special Red Seal diploma as well as certifications in areas like customer service. Um, next slide. And we also are a big DECA school. DECA is on hold for the 2020, 2021 school years because of COVID. But before COVID, we were the host school um, for uh, the Toronto region. All other schools to came to compete with us. So there was approximately 2,500 students competing in this business networking and competition. And it was a great opportunity for students again to build their resume. And just a, a little side note, not only am I a teacher at Cedar Bray, I was a graduate as well. And I can tell you it is a great place and I, I would never consider being anywhere else. So uh, if you're debating it, Cedar Bray is amazing. And uh, thank you very much. And the course code is BTT101, Intro to Information and Communication Technology. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Resnicki. Now I'm going to call on Ms. Uh, Beckford to talk to us a little bit about our Social Sciences and Family Studies Department. Could we there go back? Is. Can we go back one slide, please? Yes. Yes, welcome to Grade 8 um, Information Night. And I'm going to give you a glimpse into the Social Science and Family Studies Department. I'm Ms. Beckford, and um, I will, I'm the head of the Social Science and Family Studies Department, and I'll take you through a very um, quick glimpse into what we offer. Next slide, please. Family Studies and Social Science um, are multidisciplinary studies of characteristics and behaviors and the roles of both families and individuals in society. The department offers many courses from grade nine all the way through to grade 12. We have a number of university courses. We have a number of open courses. Some of the courses that we offer are nutrition and health, fashion, oh dear, anyway, <laughs> fashion, parenting, equity, psychology, and of course, exploring family studies, which is HIF, and that's the one that your child might be taking coming September. So the HIF course um, explores, uh, allows students to look into effective communication skills, how to set goals and decisions, issues around body image and self-esteem, and basic skills in food preparation and sewing, and also social science research skills. Next slide, please. So let's take a peek into the pharmacist department and get an idea of the physical layout and activities your child could be engaged in. All right, so that's just an example of what the layout of the food lab looks like. And those are some students that work doing different things. Thank you. And there again, there are some students at work. So in summary, because I'm very quick, as I said, um, Explain Family Studies HIF 101 
um, includes goal setting, decision making, communication skills, healthy relationships, and all of these topics will provide your child with skills necessary for life and for becoming global citizens. HIF is a course your child will want to take. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beckford. I'm gonna call on Ms. Falbar, our head of arts right now. Uh, you are muted, Ms. Vollmer. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm Miss Karen Vollmer, and I'm new to the. Oh, can you go back? Sorry. Okay, I'm new to the arts department, and uh, Cedarbury has an extensive uh, arts program in the visual arts, music, and dramatic arts. Next slide. So one of our grade nine courses, which is both visual arts and English, is called NAC 101. And it's really a focus on First Nations, Métis, and Inuit studies. So you, you earn a grade nine English as well as a visual arts um, credit in NAC. So there's really a focus on the arts through the um, lens of an Indigenous perspective. So students explore Indigenous art making, storytelling, dance, music, and activism, and we really work to identify the ally in us. There's an example of they looked at Indigenous storytelling, traditional storytelling, and ended up making a graphic novel of their own personal life stories. Next slide. So we also have grade nine visual arts in extended French and French immersion, as well as as regular um, visual arts in grade 10, 11, and 12. So it's really about developing skills, producing, presenting art, and we introduce students to new ideas, materials, and processes for artistic exploration and experimentation. So there's really looking at themes related to who they are uh, and current societal issues, as well as looking back at history. And we use mediums such as clay, paint, drawing, screen printing, sculpture, and other mediums. But I did want to emphasize that we also ask the students, what are they interested in? What really gets them excited? And then we build units based on what they want to want to use or want to explore. Thank you. Next slide. And these are two fantastic courses. In grade 11 and grade 12, there's two electives called crafting. And these senior crafting classes explore traditional and contemporary crafts through projects with fabric, clay, jewelry, masks, sewing, knitting, and paper making. And we use group critiques, critiques to reflect on and interpret our craft art with personal, contemporary, and historical perspective. So there, there's an example there of uh, creating from scratch um, their alter ego uh, through pattern making, sewing, and creating their alter ego creature. Also, they're exploring contemporary artists and then coming up with a collection of jewelry. The same thing with the vessel making uh, with clay. We also have a kiln and, um, and several clay wheels. Thank you. We have a fantastic music program that starts from grade nine right through grade 12. We have instrumental winds in grade nine, vocals grade nine, keyboards grade nine. This continues on through grade 11 with the addition of guitar and steel band, which is fantastic course, steel band. Um, then grade 11, we have winds again, vocals and guitar. Grade 12, we have guitar. So um, it really aims to develop the student's understanding and appreciation of music through a focus on practical skills and creative work. Um, they find a source of enjoyment, personal satisfaction, and really work on creative problem solving and cooperative work habits. And really seeing their um, connections to their communities. Thank you. Next slide. We have also uh, incredible dramatic arts program, drama in grade nine, all the way through to grade 12. And we also have an additional uh, film and video course, which starts in grade 10 to grade 12. So dramatic arts really builds confidence through creative collaboration while strengthening the presentation skills, an emphasis on teamwork and responsibility to others in rehearsal. And we've had some really, uh, one of the students talked about Willy Wonka, um, the musical last year, and they're about like a week away from presenting when COVID hit. So we're hoping that we, we get back to that and be able to present that musical. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Ballmer. Uh, I'd like to call on Ms. Uh, Johnson to talk about special education. Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Ms. Johnson. I'm the head of special education and student success at Cedarbury. So I'm just going to quickly take you through um, a couple things. So from the student success perspective, uh, we do look and take seriously student success for the whole school. And one thing that our school offers is a resource room. Uh, this is a room that any student in the school can come to to get extra support for their classes. They can get extra time if they need it um, or just a quiet space. So if you're finding the classrooms a bit too loud, the resource room can provide you with that accommodation so that you can get uh, your work done and make sure that you're doing well. We also have a CYW who's a child and youth worker at our school. Um, so I focus more on the academic side of things um, and the CYW we have at our school focuses on social emotional. Next slide, please. Um, so what we offer from the special education department for grades nine to 12 is our learning strategies course. Our learning strategies course is for students who do have an IEP. Um, the class size is smaller here and it also gives students an opportunity to work on work from other classes um, so that they can again get that one-on-one -on -one support within the classes. If you do not have an IEP, then you would take the GLS course, uh, which also focuses on very similar ideas to the GLE course. Next slide, please. Curriculum. So what we're looking at in our GLE courses is looking at skills for you to be successful in high school, uh, whether it's organization, time management, one-on-one uh, -on -one support with your classes. We look at literacy and numeracy skills. So we're constantly finding ways to build those into the course so that you can become stronger um, as you go through your courses. And that is it for me. Bye guys. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I'm going to call on Ms. Kim and uh, Mr. Murphy to talk about English. Yes. Hello, my name is Ms. Kim. Hi, I'm Mr. Murphy. And we represent the English and ELL department at Cedar Ray, and we love our grade nines. <laughs> so our students have aspirations to do all sorts of amazing things in their lives, from becoming surgeons and dentists to politicians, actors, screenwriters, professional athletes, fashion designers, business owners, coders, and app developers. And in the English and ELL department, it is our job to help our students achieve these goals and dreams by helping them develop their reading, writing, speaking, listening, media, and digital literacy skills. Essentially, the skills that are needed in every industry and in every area of life. So our teachers work hard to develop lessons, create assignments, and select materials that will interest and excite our grade nine students. We want our students to love coming to class and to feel empowered to share their talents and experiences and points of view. So on this slide, we have some examples of expected evaluations that um, grade nines would be doing. We also have on the next slide, we also have expanded our selection of books and materials. And we've expanded like the genres as well. So we have some historical dra drama, contemporary YA, sci-fi, and horror to name a few. We also have a variety of perspectives to better reflect the interests of our students. Next. Yes, and our uh, ESL classes are designed to prepare students to enter our mainstream English classes and academic pathways, which uh, we've been talking about throughout the night. Assignments are modeled after English classes with a focus on acquiring and practicing academic language as well as interpersonal communication skills. Um, and in addition to lessons and the stuff our students do inside our classrooms, I'll ask for the next slide here. Uh, so in addition to lessons and stuff our students do inside our classrooms, we also really love giving our uh, grade nine students opportunities for experiential learning. Uh, so community walks, visits to local libraries, um, uh, the amazing nature. We're surrounded by these like really great parks and sites of interest around the school. Uh, we also have a fantastic uh, ex extracurricular program uh, run by some teachers in our department. So we have the yearbook club for students interested in graphic design, journalism, publishing, uh, and public speaking and live performance through the poetry and storytelling club. Uh, we also love to see our students enter public speaking competitions. So there's a video clip uh, you can see there uh, of, of one that uh, has been entered this year, which is uh, virtual. But in the past, we've gone on, one of our students went on to win the uh, 
Scarborough uh, Poetry Slam competition in 2019. We were so proud. Um, the English and ESL department, we want our students to feel really excited about coming to school, uh, sharing their gifts, making friends, getting to know their teachers, uh, and having their voices heard. And we have a really lovely, energetic community at Cedarbrae, and uh, we hope to welcome you next year. My name is Hiva, and I'm 14 year old Hiringar. I'd like to recount two funny events that happened to me when I first arrived in Canada. So the first day in Canada was extremely cold. I went from the airport to my house and it was negative 15 degrees. Everyone was crying except my father, who was very funny and enjoyed telling jokes. He wanted us to stop crying. So he told us a joke that went, I'm so glad we have brown cows otherwise and that's just a sample Hello, of the... Name, uh, I'm 14 year old. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your evenings. Hello, my name is Hiva. I'm <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm going to call on Mr. Yakimuchi ah. and uh, ask him to speak to us about math. Your next slide, please. Okay, all grade nine students will study the MTH 1W grade nine mathematics course. This course enables students to consolidate and continue to develop an understanding of mathematical concepts related to number sense and operations, algebra, measurement, geometry, data, probability, and financial literacy. Students will use mathematical processes, mathematical modeling, and coding to make sense of the mathematics they are learning and to apply their understanding to culturally responsive and relevant real world situations. So this new course that all students take is also available in French for French immersion students only. Okay, next slide, please. Every grade nine math student must write the EQAO. In preparation for the grade nine EQAO assessment, grade nine math teachers will provide practice questions in class. Past assessments are available at the EQAO website listed below. Next slide, please. Cedarbrae students can join the math club and participate in the following competitions. We've run the University of McMaster Math at Mac online competition and the University of Waterloo, Pascal, Cayley, Fermat, Euclid, Fryer, Galois, and the Hypatia contests. Information about the University of Waterloo's Gauss contest for grade eight students, which is on May 18, 2022, and also for any of the high school contests can be found at the cemc.uwaterloo.ca website. Next slide. Any student having difficulty in math can get extra help from our math teachers at school during the week. In addition, TVO offers free online homework help for all students in grades 6 to 11. You can get live one-on-one -on -one tutoring from Ontario teachers. Students can ask their math questions Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Sunday, 3.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. You log on to the site at tvomathify.com and provide your Ontario educational number to register. Next slide. If you have any questions, you can contact me at emidio.yakabuchi at tdsb.on.ca or aslin.kilikoglu at tdsb.on.ca. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Yakabuchi. Ah, I'm going to call on Mr. Jones to speak. And is Dr. Roth speaking tonight too? No, it'll just be me, Ms. Totem. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, my name is Chris Jones, and along with my colleague, uh, Dr. Rebecca Roth, we are both the ACLs, or Assistant Curriculum Leaders, of the Science Department at Cedarbrae. Um, just very quickly, uh, a little overview. We'd like to, or I would like to very briefly talk about uh, why the importance of science, uh, what curriculum, what do we learn, um, what technology do we have at our disposals within the department, what clubs associated with science there are, uh, where we go in terms of trips in a normal year, um, what labs, what do we do, what do we investigate, and what facilities we have, and what pathways are available for students that are interested in taking science at the senior level. Next slide, please. 
So again, just a, very briefly, uh, why take science? Well, grade nine science and grade 10 are compulsory courses. However, we really would like you to carry on and take science at the senior level and establish a great uh, ground uh, groundwork, a foundation uh, for scientific literacy so that you can make informed decisions about your own health, about uh, public policy, about voting, and really just out of personal interest to learn something about uh, how the world works. Next slide, please. So very briefly, the grade nine curriculum consists of chemistry, biology, uh, physics, and earth and space science. The chemistry component has to do with matter and the properties of matter and a brief introduction to the periodic table. In biology, we'll have a look at sustainable ecosystems and how we can uh, help uh, ourselves to live sustainably and uh, study the important interactions amongst different species that we inhabit the planet with. Next slide, please. The physics unit deals with electricity, so how to build very basic circuits, how to analyze those circuits in terms of uh, current voltage resistance, um, looking at the difference between um, AC and DC power, um, and how we can use electricity wisely. The earth and space component of the grade nine curriculum is astronomy. So we'll have a brief look at both planetary science and uh, cosmology. Next slide, please. We also have a very exciting opportunity at Cedar Bray, and that's the Cedar Bray STEM program, where students will have the opportunity to um, advance through grade nine of one semester as one cohort. In that cohort, they will study uh, science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, and that will be grouped with science, um, English, and business. This is in a very, uh, positive opportunity and one that you should really explore when choosing a school. Uh, the grade nine STEM program has been very successful for the uh, number of years that has run now, and I hope you would give it uh, due consideration. Next slide, please. So different technologies that are disposable, um, at our disposal with Super Science. So we do have uh, fully equipped uh, labs. We have Chromebooks, uh, we have uh, data projectors, um, uh, data cameras. Uh, we really do try to push the technology angle. Uh, we do use other science-based programs like Gizmos to um, complement our lessons and hopefully um, introduce some uh, new ways of looking at things through the lens of technology. Next, next slide, please. And clubs, again, in a normal year, hopefully we will be back to some sort of normality in September. We do have the environmental club, um, which hopefully will get off and running in grade nine. We do have a roller coaster club having to do with physics. Uh, there's a robotics program that uh, taps a lot into science and technology. We have chemistry, biology, and physics contests. So there's the Avogadro contest, the University of Toronto uh, biology competition, and the Sarazic Newton physics contest. So those are at the senior level, but again, we hope that uh, you will consider studying uh, science at the senior level later on in your high school career. Next slide, please. And again, in a normal year, and I can appreciate that everyone has had a difficult couple of years, but in a normal year, uh, we do like to go on numerous field trips. So there's trips to the Ontario Science Centre, the Toronto Zoo, uh, analyzing roller coaster motion at Canada's Wonderland through physics, uh, and many other different opportunities to get out of the school and to um, experience new things in and around the city. Next slide, please. We have eight fully equipped science labs. I think you saw some of the uh, footage there um, in the uh, video, the Super video. So we do try to monopolize on that and try to incorporate as many experiential learning opportunities as possible. We have a huge variety of biological uh, specimens. We have fully equipped physics labs and chemistry labs. Um, so these really do complement our instruction and we hope that you'll take full advantage of them. Next slide, please. 
So in terms of going on in science at Cedarbrae, we're very pleased to have a wide offering of different courses at the senior level that hopefully you will influence your decision to stick with science at Cedarbrae. We have 11 university and 12 university biology courses along with a grade 11 college course. In, chem in chemistry, we have the same. So that's grade 11 university, grade 12 university. And then it's a little bit different. It's grade 12 college chemistry. And we offer physics at the grade 11 and 12 university level. Um, another course that we offer that is uh, not particularly common is the Earth and Space Science course. This is a great course, a great university level course for students that do want to explore the um, uh, different facets of earth and space science. So again, we expand on the grade nine concepts of uh, planetary science, of uh, f some physical geography and cosmology. And, um, you know, we do look at principles of geology and earth materials. We also have uh, links with cooperative programs and technological courses. Okay, next slide, please. And thank you very much for your attention tonight. We really hope you'll choose Cedar Bray as your destination school in grade uh, nine in September. And Cedar Bray is a really wonderful place to learn and grow. And I really echo the uh, uh, enthusiasm that, doc, uh, that Mr. Resnicki had. Um, really fantastic place. And we hope to see you there in September. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I'd like to call on Mr. McCallum now to uh talk to you about our Canadian World Studies Department. Hello, good night, and uh, welcome to you all to celebrate. The Canadian and World Studies Department, um, we consist of several courses, and I wanted to start with history because of the importance of what has been happening over the past two years with our uh, with residential school and our, and our um, community. History takes an extensive look at the impact of different people on the building of Canada as a diverse democracy. Canada is uh, as important as its history, and you learn this as you get to grade 10. We do offer a wide range of senior history courses, and a major part of that is learning about uh, an ancient history and history in the modern world also. One component that we did, uh, could you pause there for me, please? One component that we did in the past is uh, our history trip to Europe. And we're hoping that within the next uh, two years that we can, with, you know, restrictions um, pending, that we could, we could get back to some of these trips. Next slide, please. Next one. So geography is what you will start with in grade nine. So we'll move away from social studies uh, in grade seven and we focus on geography. Next slide, please. The grade nine geography program is an extensive one. And one of the, the, the things that we study in detail are different issues in, um, in Canada, all the different issues. And as you can see, a major component of our experiential learning is our field trips, typically downtown, where we take students out of the community and have them experience other areas besides Scarborough. And we get to experience quite a bit. We, we visit the CN Tower, we visit the zoos, we go skating, um, we go to Nathan Phillips Square, and we just take them to, to really experience other things outside of the um, community. The other thing we do, uh, next one please, is, is, is to uh, try to, to ensure that they look back at their culture with our cultural diversity project. Every year we do something where the students can really examine their journey, their parents' journey, or to just simply study a culture of their choice. Next slide, please. And so the cultural diversity project is one that gets them to really dig in deep and see what is happening. We look at um, flooding, we look at the natural disaster in Canada, and we try to give them a holistic look at what is happening across the country. Next slide, please. We, one of our most popular course or, or, or program is the law sections of courses. And we do, um, a whole range of university and, um, uh, and, and politics and economics also. 
Next slide, please. Most of these courses, we take our kids, as you can see, field trip is a major component of our course where we try to get kids having this hands-on. We take them to the Supreme Court. Um, we take them all over so that they can not just learn in, in the classroom. We are also connected to many of the, the clubs that you have seen. I coach, um, could go back to the, the previous one, please. I, I coach uh, several of the teams and many people in our department. We do the Model UN, we do some of the diversity clubs, and we just try to ensure that cultural diversity and a wide range of things are available. Final course, next one for me, please, is we also, next slide, examine uh, Canadian politics and world politics too. And this, we, we start building on it in civics and then continue with our, um, <laughs> yes, Donald, and continue with our grade 12 um, Canadian politics course, which gets them to look at all political issues uh, at a Canadian and global level. Next slide, please. Um, I helped to facilitate the Black Student Association and we at times get to take students as far as Detroit as a part of the club and an extension of the Canadian World Studies Department. And so we're really encouraging you to choose the best school at Markham and Lawrence uh, because there is so much for you to experience here. And one thing I wanted to, to mention that one of the things you'll see as you enter the building at Cedarbrae is an indigenous mural that was painted there. And this indigenous mural was painted by our art department a couple of years ago and they and um, indigenous artists. And it's just a wonderful testament to the diversity of our school. And it's something that I'm encouraging you when you get the chance to, to come in and see because it is not just a work of art, it is a, a connection to our past and our culture. I just wanna thank you for that. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. McCallum. And thank you to all our, our department leaders for presenting to the students tonight information about their departments. We are definitely looking forward to you coming to Cedar Break next year. And we do have our website, um, cedarbreakci.com. We have the grade nine transition. So if you just hover over the word guidance, just, you'll see there's many things that are available to you, but the grade nine, eight to nine transition page is the first one. We will post this video that we and presentation we just did um, online. I will update this information and within um, hopefully by the weekend or the beginning of Next Monday, under the beginning high school, you will see the uh, course selection worksheets available for you. So you can take a look at what's available to you at Cedar Break. Um, we do thank you so much for your time. Um, Ms. Richard Sauer, did you want to say anything as we close this evening off? Thank you, Ms. Dottam. I'd just like to, again, thank our students, our parents and our staff for coming out tonight. Big thank you to Ms. Dottam um, for all the work that she has done in preparing this presentation and to Mr. Grover, Mr. Barnes, Ms. Beck, and all the teachers who came out today, the, our um, curriculum leaders, too, too numerous to, um, to list lest we go over time. And it's a testament to the dedication and the quality of teachers that we have at Cedar Bray who have come out today to showcase the wonderful programs that they offer here and the programs that they lead so that all students can have a great um, experience here at Cedarbury. So thank you very much to everyone. And we certainly hope to see all of you here in September at Cedarbury.